Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, right? Tuesday today. Day two of this week. How are you guys doing? I'm headed up to Arbor today. I got to hook up to a, a van trailer, you know, 5057. And uh, we'll see what they got for me. I'm used to pulling up roll tights or flatbeds up to Arbor. I don't think I've ever loaded a dry van up there before. This green pickup truck hasn't moved in at least a year. Wonder what they do with it. Maybe it's just an advertising piece. It makes you look at that auto body shop every time you go past anyway, so I guess it's doing its job. This is Arbor, once again. The nice little small town you might not even have known existed, but now you do. It's actually a thriving little community. They got uh, quite a bit going for them up here. So we're here, a little bit of wind here, and uh, we got one big crate that we're picking up, that's it. And it's a big one though, so it's right back here. It's not even at the dock. They're gonna load it on the back of the truck here, and uh, I'm gonna take that back with me. That's all we're picking up. It's going to Whitehorse Yukon, way up by uh, uh, the border with Alaska on the Canadian side. I've been there once. I was there with Britain, remember? For New Year's, a few years back, we had a trip up there. Way up north. Here at the Petrol Pass, Arbor, we have our load on us. It's just that, that one big piece. They put it on the tail of the trailer. And I'm not sure if they're going to uh, transfer it when we get back or not, but that's uh, that's a worry for later. Right now, our worry is getting it back to our yard in one piece and safely, without damaging anything. And so far, we're off to a good start. We got full tanks of fuel again, just in case. You never know. I don't like to go below a half tank. As soon as I start getting close to half a tank, I start looking for fuel stops. Why is this guy kicking up so much dust? That's a paved road. Look at this. Where'd all that dust come from? Yikes. Ah, I should have closed my window now. My gauges are going to be all dusty. But look, I'm not kicking up that kind of dust. Weird, right? Huh. Alright, well I believe this is Highway 68, right? Gonna take this across the highway eight and shoot ourselves south. Just like that. Here's a little pioneer village, just like Steinbeck has, except this is the Arbor uh, version. This is the heritage village. This is what the, the first village looked like when they first settled here. Or similar to it, right? It's so cool to see those little little things. It's it's unimaginable like how hard it must have been to to sail on a boat across the planet to uh, a foreign place that you've never been to before. Hopefully you make it because those boats were riddled with sicknesses. And if you make it, you gotta get all the way to the inland of the continent, way out here to Manitoba. And once you get here, there's nothing. There's no roads, there's no police department, no fire department. There's no house, you gotta build your own house. There's no government giving you government handouts or help to get started. All that you have is what you arrived with. You gotta build civilization from scratch. And now this country is among the G7, seven most wealthiest economies on the planet in less than 150 years. It took them less than 150 years to build it up there. That's how fast they got here and turned this into one of the greatest countries on earth. It's amazing. Jimmy! Oh boy! Made it home. Got a free haircut. Courtesy of me. I'm a barber. I only do one haircut though. 
So there's not many options, but looks it's looking all pretty today. I had to get out of my PJs and put on some makeup today in order to function. How's it going today with all the, the shots you've been taking? And Honestly, not bad until I vacuumed the house and then all of a sudden I felt like I had run a marathon and then I got a little bit grouchy for about a half hour. And then I got my second wind while we were grocery shopping and now I'm fine again. Hmm. Yeah, we went grocery shopping. That was fun. Food. I like food. So do these guys. <laughs> yes, they do. Chevy, it's rude to stand there. Chevy, back up. Do you guys have Saskatoon berries where you're from? When I grew up on a street nearby here, near Blumenort, we had Saskatoon bushes that would grow all along our street. And every year we would go and pick pails and pails of Saskatoon berries, and they're always so good. Are they native to this area, or are they? Do you know? I'm not sure. We had them at our last mm -hmm. place too. We had lots of bushes. Sort of like blueberries, but blueberries grow lower down, right, on the ground. These are a little more bitter though, and have bigger seeds inside of them. I'm not a big oh. Saskatoon berry person, but really? this jam smells fabulous. The Saskatoon berries that we had never had seeds. I don't think. I don't remember ever having seeds in them. Oh, yeah, they do. They have big pits. What? You just eat them. What kind of alternate universe are you, are you in? In my universe, we don't have seeds in our Saskatoon berries. Do you know anything about Saskatoon berries? <laughs> are there seeds in them? Because we just picked them off the bushes. Like the bushes would go real tall. And you just pick them off and you just... Yeah, we had, so like, we had like 10 foot tall Saskatoon berry bushes at our last house. But they didn't have seeds in them. Yeah, they you did. You could just chow down. That's why I liked them so much, because I didn't like cherries, because cherries had the seeds. Well, darling, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're wrong. We must have had seedless bushes. One of those uh, genetically engineered Saskatoon... A magical bushes. Saskatoon bush. Yeah, it was a magical street. It was a street I grew up on. Isn't everyone's street they grew up on like a magical place? Like, as an adult, you look back on it and it's totally different than how you remember it growing up? I never thought my street was magical. I like, I like my mom's house that I grew up in, but I never thought the street was magical. I didn't have to fight her very hard to get her to move out of the city. No. I'll say that. Not at all. Winnipeg, something else. There's there's good areas of Winnipeg, like, but you got to have money to live <laughs> A lot of money. Like, uh, I like St. Patel a lot. I like the southern, south, southern, southern, southern part of the city, eastern part of the city. No, oh, there's just some pockets that are, uh... Yeah, a little dicey? A little dicey. A little dicey. Yeah. It is Winnipeg. We are the... The murder capital of Canada. I'm not even joking. Winnipeg. We're actually in a pretty, like, pretty dead heat with Edmonton. Like, Edmonton is, uh, they, they overtake us every now and then. Edmonton, uh, in Alberta, takes the title for murder capital. Don't they have, like, ten times the population, though? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Well... No, everyone in Canada knows Winnipeg's a dicey place to I mean, you just don't end up in the wrong We're place. We're famous for Slurpees, murder, and blizzards. Yep. And Mennonites. If you come out of the city to the south. Yeah, I'm talking about Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg, yeah. Manitoba, southern Manitoba. There's all of us weird Mennonites out here. Mennonites and French people. And Ukrainians. A lot of Ukrainians down south. Say something, Frank. They want to hear from you. What's the good word? Give them their fortunes. No? Nothing to say? It's almost needle time. We're gonna have a clean, sanitary surface. Mm -hmm. She is much more prepared for this one. This is the third time. Feeling a little less hesitant, a little less unsteady. Got to do this today, uh, tomorrow night, and Friday night, and then on Saturday morning we go in for an ultrasound. That right. is inaccurate. Tonight is actually Tuesday, not Wednesday. Try that again. <laughs> today is Tuesday, right? Correct. Okay. Oops. So she's got to do this today. And two more days after this, which 
would be Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday morning we go in for the ultrasound. Yeah, or she goes in. I, I go in, I, I wait in the car. Exactly. So you're a little more confident in how to mix this all up today? I mean, no. I kind of draw a blank every time. <laughs> I just go with it. So if you haven't seen the other times she's, uh, she's done it. Uh, that gets mixed in with those two powder things. And that's her first injection. Yep. It's even overwhelming for me and it doesn't really have much to do with me right now. I mean, my part is coming. Psyching myself up and you know, I'm getting ready. She takes half of that out into the syringe. A little tough to poke through there, eh? Uh huh. I'm not doing it the best way, I don't think. Well, you're a lot better at it already. Getting there. The learning process, and I wasn't helping because I'm like more overwhelmed than she is. So I'm trying to stay calmer today. <laughs> but don't worry. No, my part's coming. We're involved too. Very important. I mean, it is. It's either that or we gotta pay for someone else's. I don't wanna do that. I want little trucker Josh's. So he's very concerned with what I've been doing yeah, lately. Very concerned. Oh, very cute. Except for Wiener over there. My husband getting another skin puppy. Another puppy with no fur. Great. Steven's bed over there. Where's Diesel? Probably on the bed making a nest. Yeah, probably laying on our pillows. Even though we try to cover them up every day. Great, they're busy. That's pretty much we it. Do nest. And then we'll ask him, what did you do? And then he'll look at Chevy like Chevy did it. It's true. I always get in trouble for him. Well, you're getting much better at that. Thank you. Thank you. Way better. Thank you very much. Just rocketing through that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There's a needle. There's a needle. Okay. Even that first try? Wow. You know what you're doing. Done it a time or two now. Literally twice. So that's the one that burns a little bit when you inject it, right? Uh, last night's, both of them burned actually. But, uh, but last night, neither one of them really bruised much. You saw my first two bruises, they were insane. Uh, my other two, I'll show you right away. So, this <laughs> was from that one the first time. And then this one was from the pen the first time. Yikes. And the second ones didn't leave any bruise? Uh, just tiny bit right there. Little bit from the Menoper last night. And then, uh, yeah, and then that little one is from the Gonal F pen last night. Yikes, but that one there, yikes. Yeah, that one, and that's, that's funny because that's actually the only one that hasn't hurt yet. I, Oh no, pardon me, it was, it was painful. It was the metal part, but, yep. Alrighty. We have arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we'll do it right about there. All right, here we, oh right, I gotta make sure, get the little, there we go, there we go. Okay, where was that? Let's try that one more time. <laughs> Hard to grab. I have very soft skin.
Numero two. Looks <coughs> like a tickle. Numero two. Numero two. De. 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 Dos. Dos. This one's a lot easier to do. Uh, but it's in a fancy pan. Yep, it's much easier to use. I wish every injectable medication came with one of these bad boys. All right. Does it say how much is left in there? Uh, 450. Okay. So not quite two doses. So we'll have to move on to the second pen tomorrow. Okay. All right, twists on, right? Right. So this is the one that's much like a diabetes pen, right? Diabetes injection? Insulin pen. Insulin pen, that's what you call it? Okay. It's for diabetes. For it's diabetes. It's not a diabetes pen. The well, <laughs> diabetes pen. Diabetes. Puts it to 225. 225, yeah. And away we go. All right. So much easier. Isn't it? Oh, no man. mixing it, no nothing. It comes pre mixed. Like, isn't that nice? It's very nice. All right. All right, right about. Let's go in there. Okay. Takes those bruises. I've always been a bad bruiser. I'm very pasty, but also my iron's probably low because. I can't eat red meat right now because I'm trying to stick to some somewhat Mediterranean diet throughout all this. But I haven't been totally well behaved, but red meat right now because I'm not used to it anymore makes me a little bit sick. So. Day three. Day three. There's a lot of people out there that go through this process. A lot more than I thought. So than I thought too. probably chances are that you probably have gone through this or know somebody who's gone through this or is currently going through this. And now you sort of know what the injections look like. Five days of this and then there will be more. But we have five days, and then we go see the doctor, and then they tell her what she needs, and either more or less, and then we go get some more from the pharmacy. And uh, mid-April is when they do the surgery, right? That's what we've been saying? Yeah, right around then. Around mid-April, yeah, and then, so. Hoping that it's before our family gathering. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd really like to make it to Easter. You, you already told them, right, that you uh, 14 follicles? I think I did, yeah. 14 eggs going on. So hopefully this yeah. stuff does the trick. Yeah. And hopefully and, they uh, can extract them all without damaging any. That'd be wonderful. And hopefully they're all healthy. I mean, I know the chances are low, but you can always hope. And then after the extraction is when I come in. And for my part. And uh, they fertilize everyone that they can in like a petri dish little make little science babies and we're using we chose to use a process called ICSI where they actually take a microscopic needle and inject the sperm into the egg so that the chances of fertilization are actually better because we already know that our uh, cells or our his sperm my eggs have trouble communicating already so now we just gotta force them and then they're hand-picked by the scientists a healthy ones so yeah as opposed to the other option where they put her egg in a petri dish and then just drop my boys in there and just say go to town there she is right there there's no barriers there's no goalies there's no race she's boom just drop them out right there we didn't want to take that chance it's a little bit more expensive this way but this way like she said that the scientists go in there and pick like the ultimate the ultimate little sperm like hand picked so when this baby is born it will be hand picked they're gonna pick the best one and they inject the single one right into the egg like right into there And that does come with some risk of damaging the egg, but it's very rare So if there's let's say there's 14 that that we get and they can fertilize all 14. Hopefully we don't lose any 
uh, they let them grow in a lab for five days. Right? For five, five days. Seven. Five to seven days. And then once they reach a certain maturity, we freeze them. And then one at a time after that. So let's say all 14 work and are fertilized and grow. That means that we have 14 shots, 14 chances. As long as they survive the thawing process. Yeah, they're going to survive that. But chances are they usually don't all survive. So out of 14, we're hoping for, what are you hoping for? Like 8 to 10? That would eight. be wonderful. Yeah. Um, and I checked our receipt. I actually had emailed to me mm -hmm. from the clinic. And it's about $2,000 more to opt for, for ICSI. Okay. Process. So, two thousand bucks at our clinic here in Manitoba, anyway. Okay, so that would have been included in our fee that we paid the other day, then. Yes, it was. So our fee for the surgery and for ICSI was eight thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars, and then the meds that she's injecting into herself right now, five days worth, was twenty three hundred dollars. Twenty three and some change. Yeah, about twenty three hundred and nine dollars. Uh, registration that was six hundred dollars, right? Yep. Um, and then the transfer, they call it a transfer when they implant the, each time they implant, uh, they call that a transfer. Each transfer is $2,000. Yeah. So if we were to go, if it didn't work and we were to go month after month until one did work, it's $2,000 a pop until it works after all of this yet. Yeah. Plus I had a preemptive ultrasound before all this, just to make sure that my body was producing eggs. And that was another $150. Plus the oral meds that I took to prime my body for these meds. Well, we have insurance, thankfully, so it was only 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also going to need to buy more of this medication that she's injecting right now. Yeah. After our appointment on, I keep calling it our appointment, after her appointment on Friday. I'm, I'll be there, but it's not my, I don't need to be there, but still our appointment. I'm involved. I'm very important. Okay. Hey, you're a very hands-on husband and daddy. Very important. Daddy to be. Couldn't do it without me. No, I certainly couldn't. Well, there I'm sure there are many thousands of donors <laughs> out there. It's true. But it's true. mine are the best. Just saying. It's gonna be a handsome trucker baby. That's right.